Okay, so here we have the consolidated financial statements and all the entries that have been made in relation to uh, the equity accounting example that we have here. Now the first thing just to remember is this is an associate where the investor has a 30% share in the company. So all of these figures that we're looking at are going to be 30% of the associate's amounts that we saw on the information page a little bit earlier. So that's the first piece of information we just need to, to bear in mind. Um, the second piece of information that we need to bear in mind is that this company, uh, the investment was dealt with at cost in the investor's books. So that first step to adjust for fair value, we don't need to do because it wasn't relevant in this particular example. Now, the first step of part two is to make an adjustment for or show up the percentage share of profit. Now, the overall net profit before tax of the associate was $100,000. So quite obviously from that, $30,000 is 30% share of that. Tax at 30%, so 30% of... 30% of $30,000 gives you $9,000 share of tax expense. And the remaining amount, do it in blue, the remaining amount, the $21,000 is 30% of the net profit after tax, which would have been $70,000 um, for the associate. That amount gets added to the investment account. So that's why we see the investment account over here being debited um, $21,000. The next step we have is to make the adjustment for any dividend revenue received. Now the dividend revenue was $30,000 uh, paid by the associate which means the investor actually received $9,000, which is 30% of that. Now, in the investor's books, and we haven't shown that, they would have shown debit, cash, credit, dividend, revenue. We actually show this in, in total as a reduction in the investment, which is why the investment account is being credited, and it's not shown as a dividend revenue, so we debit the dividend re revenue, and that will actually offset what happens in the accounts of the investor. So what we're actually ending up with is debit cash credit investment. The third thing that we have here is showing a debit investment credit opening retained earnings. And this is picking up all the prior profits that have happened up till the start of this year netting out against any prior dividends. So in effect um, what this is doing is picking up the prior effects of all of these entries because what we've seen, what I've just circled are the current year effects. These would end up netting out and having um, an effect on retained earnings moving forward. But because we're interested in, in the cumulative effect of all the profits the associate has made on the investment, we can't ignore the prior year profits. And so we need to show how retained earnings has changed from when not control was taken, but when a significant influence was taken in this company to the start of this financial year. And then the first two entries will pick up the effect during the financial year. The last two entries, both increasing the investment because in both cases, these equity accounts, the first one revaluation surplus and second one general reserve, both of these have increased in the case of the revaluation surplus by $70,000, 30% of that being 21, and then general reserve, there was a prior year transfer, um, most likely from retained earnings, but we actually don't know, um, into the general reserve of $6,000. Um, 
those also get added to those amounts get added to the investment account and we credit those various equity accounts um, in each of those situations.